Our story starts in 2010 when Sammy was still in high school and Kaya Cruz was blasting on the radio. Our high school decided to offer intro to computer science for the first time in four years, and I was about to graduate from mashing together building blocks and game maker to a real programmer. I couldn't be more excited. That's why, when a friend told me that our class was computer science for babies, and that real programmers used C++ and Lisp, my middle school boy instincts kicked in, and I had to learn this new language. There's also this XKCD comic comparing Lisp developers to the ultimate Jedi, and that's how I thought of myself in my brain, so I had to learn it. I didn't know how to use the terminal at the time, so I downloaded a GUI from the internet and tried out my first lines of common Lisp. At the time, I was just trying to feel like a cool kid. But now, 10 years later, I have a much better understanding as a language and can explain why so many people find it mystical. Many of the articles about Lisp were actually written 10 to 20 years ago. So in order to understand why so many people liked it, we actually have to look a little bit at the history of the language. In the early days of computer science, when people were first trying to figure out how to model a computer, the academic community was split into two main camps. One group wanted their model to represent the physical hardware that was implemented. And they focused on the Turing machine. Even though the Turing machine was around before most modern computers, it seemed better suited to solving pragmatic problems. It more closely represented what people thought of as computation. On the other side, there was the lambda calculus, an idea that we could model the entirety of computer science with anonymous functions and nothing else. We've shown that you can make anything, even objects in recursion, from just these anonymous functions, or lambda expressions. It's also closely related to ideas of set theory and mathematics, although computers aren't always able to make choices. Language development proceeded from these two camps, with one side starting with assembly and then trying to build higher and higher layers of abstraction, and the other side starting with a strong mathematical foundation and trying to implement it efficiently on a machine. Eventually, these two sides converged, and we managed to create a language that accomplishes neither. With a strong mathematical foundation and the support of the academic community, Lisp was the language that invented many modern programming concepts, including conditionals, higher-order functions, recursion, garbage collection, and even interactive development through the REPL. If you know anything about computer science, you know that any one of these features is a big deal, enough to set a language apart from its competitors. It was as these new features developed that I would describe as the golden era of Lisp development, when the language received some of its strongest praise. You can imagine what it must have been like, writing higher-order functions interactively in your terminal, while all of your friends were stuck debugging segfaults in C. If you used Lisp, it must have felt like you had superpowers. But there's another, much deeper reason why Lisp was so successful, and it has to do with all those parentheses. When most people created languages, they wanted to make something that was easy for humans to understand. So when you wanted to do 3 plus 4, they made the language say 3 plus 4. And when you wanted to do 3 times 4, they made the language say 3 times 4. And when you wanted to print hello world, you would type print hello world, until they decided they didn't like that anymore, and they wanted to break everybody's existing code base. If you want to do the same thing in Lisp, you have to use this funny parentheses syntax. 3 plus 4 looks like plus 3 4, 3 times 4 looks like times 3 4, and print line hello world looks like print line hello world, except in parentheses. What makes Lisp so special is that every operation has exactly the same syntax. In Lisp, everything looks like open parentheses, the name of the operation, followed by its arguments. This is true of addition, multiplication, print line, and everything else you'd want to do in the language. To see why this is such a big deal, let's make a quick comparison between Lisp and Java. In Java, if you want to call a function, you write it like this. But in Lisp, it's just the name of the operation followed by its arguments in parentheses. In Java, if you want to add two numbers, you use this infix notation 3 plus 4. But in Lisp, again, it's the name of the operation followed by its arguments in parentheses. In Java, if you want to make a new variable, there's the special variable declaration syntax. But in Lisp, it's just the name of the operation, which is variable definition, followed by its arguments in parentheses. In Java, if you want to define a new function, there's the special method definition syntax that looks like this. But in Lisp, it's just the name of the operation, which is defn for defining a function, followed by its arguments. Even if you want to write a for loop or an if statement, in Java, it has the special syntax but in Lisp, again, it's just the name of the operation, if, followed by its arguments. In Lisp, this even includes namespace and class definitions. To see why this is useful, let's take a look at a simple example. We can represent this as a tree with the operation at the top and its arguments as children. Because in Lisp, every operation has exactly the same structure, we can do this for even more complex programs. With its operation at the root and its arguments as children, 
Because each of its arguments is itself a list program, we can do this again and break it down into its operation and its arguments. Now 4 plus 10 is a subtree of the original tree. We can keep going until we represent our entire program as one giant tree. Now that we have access to the entire program as a data structure, we can do operations on that data structure. If I wanted to multiply the second argument of every addition call by 2, I could make that change by operating on this data structure. Instead of treating the code as a string, I can treat it as a tree and then do operations on that tree. In contrast, if I wanted to accomplish the same thing in Java, I wouldn't be able to do it without understanding the order of operations or digging into the AST for the language. In Java, there's complicated parsing logic, but in Lisp, it's easy to write scripts that take code as input and produce code as output. This means that in Lisp, it's easy to augment the language and to write code that modifies the language itself. Let's suppose for a minute that the language designers were high and they forgot to implement a for loop into the language. In Java, you could use while loops everywhere, and it would be a little bit of a pain, but you could live with it. There would be a ton of extra boilerplate code, but you're a Java developer, so you'd be used to that already. But in Lisp, you could write your code as though you had access to a for loop, and then you could write a little script that transformed all of the for loops in your code into while loops. And it's easy to do this because you have access to the structure of the language. Lisp even takes this a step further, and it all has to do with the REPL. REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop, and it's how Lisp programs are actually executed. The way that it works is if you have a program with a few expressions, it reads the first expression, evaluates it, and then prints the result to the terminal. It then loops this behavior, reading the next expression and the next expression, until all of the expressions have been evaluated. Now here's where things get really spicy. Lisp actually lets you add code at read time before the expression is evaluated. This means that we can write our little programs that take code as input and produce code as output and have them execute during the normal flow of operation. Specifically, this means that you can modify the language of Lisp from within the language itself and you can do it interactively while the program is currently running. These are not your granddaddy's C macros. Continuing with our for loop example, let's look at the actual definition of do times and closure. When you're watching this section, remember that a macro is a little program that takes code as input and produces code as output. With this macro defined, if we use do times somewhere in our Lisp code, like this, then at read time, before anything is evaluated, it will use the macro definition to transform the code to something that looks like this. The transform code is what actually gets executed during evaluation. So when you write do times in code, what you're actually executing is a little recursive loop. To see how this relates to the macro definition, the macro takes code as input, produces code as output, and the code that it produces as output is the code that actually gets passed up for evaluation. What's important here is that it happens at read time, and it takes unevaluated code as input and produces unevaluated code as output. It's impossible to write something like this as a Java method unless every time you call it, you wrap all of the arguments in a Lambda expression. Because you can inject code at read time, it means you can modify the language to fit your needs as a developer. When you use another language, like Python or Java, the language designers decide how the language works and how you have to operate within it. But in Lisp, you get to decide how the language works, and you get to make your own choices, for better or for worse. This is why so many of the most important language features originated in Lisp. It lets you build the language you want without any blocks or restrictions. It also lets you be a three-star programmer. But if you're truly a Jedi, you can build things in ways that are impossible anywhere else. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to like and subscribe for more quality content.